Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel. And in the video today, we're looking at why don't hot dogs and hot dog buns come in packs of equal number. Yes, finally today, we are going to answer perhaps the most oft-asked question that we get in our inbox, a question that has been perplexing mothers, stoned teenagers, and lazy comedians for decades. Why do hot dog buns come in packs of eight when hot dogs are usually sold in packs of ten? For our American viewers who've been dealing with this infuriatingly mundane problem for years, we'd like to point out that you're not alone in your struggle. For example, in the UK, while hot dogs are usually sold in cans of eight, yes, cans, hot dog buns are sold in packs of six. While the numbers may be a little different in these two countries, the result is the same. Extra hot dogs lying around with no bun to put them in. So why is it that these two industries, whose interests and customer bases are so closely intertwined, have failed to pick up on this seemingly obvious gap in their marketing strategy? Is it really that they just want you to have excess of one or the other so that you continue to buy them in a vicious but profitable cycle? In truth, you can find hot dog packages containing eight dogs to match with the buns, but by far the more popular is the 10-pack in the state. So, how did this come to be? The most common explanation for this is that, as with many meat products, hot dogs are sold by the pound, and because the average hot dog weighs about 1.6 ounces, this invariably means that your average packet of hot dogs is going to contain 10. According to the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council, this was a decision reached by manufacturers in the 1940s, prior to which hot dogs were sold by butchers in varying quantities and sizes. However, as mentioned, hot dogs are sometimes sold in packs of eight, often labeled as jumbo hot dogs, with the weight still usually coming out at a pound. But the 10 to the pound rule is by far the most popular, whether because that's what people are used to, or because the bread to meat ratio is simply to the liking of the masses when the dogs are 1.6 ounces. So barring the hot dog manufacturers deciding to throw out the traditional pounds per pack metric en masse, this isn't likely to change anytime soon among most manufacturers. As with all things though, of course, there are exceptions. So, well, what about the bread? Now, bread isn't really sold by any particular weight in the United States, though historically in the UK it was. After the Bread Act of 1822, all loaves had to weigh a pound or a multiple thereof. This law, which stemmed from another law passed in 1266 called the Assize of Bread and Ale, was in effect right up until World War II, during which time it was decided that all loaves had to weigh 14 instead of 16 ounces or a multiple thereof to save flour. This soon became the law of the land starting in 19. 1963. Thankfully for us Brits who wanted more diverse loaves, this law has since been abolished. Hot dog buns don't really fall under this law at all, but we thought it was pretty interesting, and since interesting stuff is kind of what we do on this channel, we thought we'd include it. So what's stopping bakers simply making bread buns in packs of 10 if they're not packaged by weight like the meat is? Well, really nothing at all except tradition. This isn't so easy to change without incurring some expenses, changing machinery to accommodate the new package size sizes and layout would be no trivial thing. Besides the machinery, other things like pans, newly sized packaging, shipping containers, etc. would all need to be changed. For instance, one of the most common types of pan used to make hot dog buns on an industrial scale bakes them in clusters of four. Again, while pans that bake buns in numbers divisible by ten do exist, they're far less common, as is the automatic machinery, to package them in a five by two arrangement. To incur the extra cost of modifying perfect good working equipment, a company would need a good reason. And as Oscar Mayer noted a few decades ago, only about one in 5,000 or so correspondence they receive from customers is a complaint about hot dog buns not commonly coming in packs of 10, like the traditional packs of hot dogs. So lack of customer demands, particularly today when jumbo dogs in their packs of eight are readily available to those who like to up their meat to bread ratio, has resulted in little interest in most large baking companies investing the money to start mass producing buns in packs of 10. Again, as always, there are exceptions. It has also been speculated that as people may or may not bother to count how many buns are in a package while they shop, and the package of 10 will inherently cost more, if another brand is putting them out in packages of eight, a casual quick grab customer might simply always go for the other brand instead of the one sold in packages of 10. 
While more leisurely shoppers might not make such a mistake, never underestimate the coupon clipping shopper in a hurry on their way home from work. And of course, despite it all costing the same in the end, many a driver will choose not to fill their car full of fuel in favor of saving money now. That same individual looking to buy buns may make the same type of decision when choosing the 8 versus 10 pack, again favoring the manufacturer who goes with the traditional 8. For a little more hard data in this web of speculative theories, as noted by Aiton Gerstner of Georgetown University and James D. Hess of North Carolina State University, nearly 40% of people they surveyed in their study on this very topic indicated that they do not regularly compare package sizes versus unit prices when determining which items to buy. Perhaps lending some credence to this particular theory as to why there would be little benefit in a particular hot dog bun maker making the switch or offering both. In any event, at this point, you might be wondering why the bakers sold them in packs of 8 and 12 in the first place. For this, we can't nearly be as definitive as with the origin of the 10-pack of hot dogs, and must continue to delve into the tenuous realm of speculation, which we normally don't like to do, and even more so in this case as pretty much all proposed hypotheses are not very convincing. But it's generally thought it started out that way, as bakers classically liked to work in multiples of 4 rather than multiples of 5 or other odd numbers. As to why, it's been speculated that multiples of 4 are easier to work with. For instance, with multiples of 4, you get more uniform packaging than with every other multiple of 5, which potentially may have an odd man out depending on the configuration. Multiples of 2 or the more common 4 are always going to be even, leading bakers to tend to be biased in favor of it when making products products that are sold with multiple items in a single package. On top of this, it has been noted that before the advent of modern baking machinery and large factories, dividing dough up relatively evenly by hand is easier to do if continually dividing in half and again and again, with final numbers a power of two until you get down to the desired size, perhaps leading to the even number preference even before such packaging concerns were a thing, with the notable exception of the baker's dozen of 13. As for the reason why a baker's dozen is 13, we also made a video about that, and you can find a link to it in the description below. Obviously, a multiple of 10 would make a perfectly even package, and in the UK, the buns often come in packages of 6 rather than 8, when the hot dogs are in cans of 8 rather than 10. So I guess on this latter point, for which evidence is lacking and there is no satisfactory answer, we'll just go with Illuminati confirmed. And now for some bonus facts. You'll often hear that the name hot dog comes from a cartoon drawn by T.A. Dorgan during a New York Giants baseball game at the Polo Grounds around 1902 to 1906. The date varies depending on who's telling the story. At this game, he supposedly observed a vendor, Harry Stevens, selling hot dachshund sausages. Dorgan, being inspired by this, drew a dachshund in a hot dog bun, but didn't know how to spell dachshund, so just wrote hot dog. As with so many such cute origin anecdotes, this is unequivocally false. More on this in an upcoming video. It isn't known exactly when somebody first got the bright idea to put sausages in a bun, however, the first historical reference of sausages themselves goes all the way back to one of the first books ever written, Homer's Odyssey. As when a man besides a great fire has filled a sausage with fat and blood, and turns it this way and that, and is very eager to get it quickly roasted. While it is unlikely that the practice of putting sausages in some sort of bread only happened recently, bread being a staple food throughout history and sausages being relatively popular in many cultures. The first recorded instances of sausages being sold encased in bread comes from around the 1860s, where various German immigrants sold frankfurters with milk rolls and sauerkraut on the streets of New York City. There are numerous stories of people having claimed to be the first to put the sausage in a bun, but nobody knows for sure which, if any, are true. A common theme among all of these stories is that the idea behind the bun was to be able to serve the hot dogs to customers on the streets without the customers burning their hands on the hot sausages. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also over there on the right are a couple of other videos that we put together that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.